Hi guys, it's Shishka Bobber one coming right back at you with another Boom Beach video. Today's video, guys, I'm happy to announce that we are into Season 3 of Warships, and here we are, back on the SS Fun and Imagination. Not quite ready to call it the Pound Town yet. Um, so, uh, Season 3 is here, guys. Let's just get right into it. What can I say? Um, first thing to say, we've already discovered a, um, a feature, as we'll call it. Um, there's no point in not talking about it, because everybody knows about it. It's the whole reason why everyone's got their engine rooms on the right-hand side, guys. You know it, I know it, everyone's mother knows it. No need to get your panties in a bunch if you, if you think I'm telling you something you shouldn't be, be hearing. Uh, you can totally deploy troops all along the left-hand side of the, um, of the map right now, two engine rooms. Obviously, it looks like the front of the boat will probably be removed at a later stage, and there were parts of the landing zone, parts of the ramp, from the front that are still accessible by clicking along the side. If you don't know that, <laughs> you should, and you should put all of your engine rooms on the right-hand side. This has also led to a little bit of a slightly maybe more stale meta than what we would have otherwise expected had that feature not been there. Um, and I don't know how easy that feature is going to be to to modify <laughs> if they so choose, um, because I feel like you're going to need an update or something um, in order to make that kind of a change, because it's inside of the the code for the Season 3 Warship. I don't think they can just do that on the server side. It has to be a client side update, would be my guess. So that's kind of sticky. Um, I'm hoping that when we unlock more engine rooms that um, it doesn't become an issue. Maybe we, maybe this ramp opens up at the next ER, I hope. Because um, some bad things can happen when we get warriors. and eh, We won't worry about that. Let's just hope that this doesn't become more of an issue than it already is. I think several players already got hit by it. <laughs> so a lot of people started up putting their engine rooms on the left. And then all of a sudden you saw some people just flare their heavies or flag their heavies straight to your engine rooms. You're probably like, what the heck is that? Um, but whatever, guys. It's not a big deal. We all know it. We're all playing by the same rules. Um, so you factor that in. So, I mean, in one sense, as, as a feature, it's it's interesting. Okay, we didn't expect that. I don't think they did either. But um, but it's interesting. We're all playing by the same rules when it comes to that. And that's why we see the, the defensive meta already being shifted to the right. Before we start talking about metas and all that junk, we got to jump into the tech tree, guys. This is the tech tree portion. This video, by the way, I'll just be introducing Season 3, giving some brief concepts, reviewing the tech tree, and playing a replay, and maybe doing a live hit. Try to do all this really quickly, though. Oh, it's a lot of stuff, huh? Um, so here we go. Here is our tech tree. Let's let's analyze multi nodes. I think that's always the best thing to do with a tech tree. Um, start off with the first two multi nodes. We see we have options of sniper tower, machine gun, and cannon. Not that interesting. Just kind of depends on the meta you're in. Second multi node. Um, you also got sniper tower, mines, and cannon. This time uh, it's doubled. You see two sniper towers, five mines, or two cannons. I I'm not sure why mines would ever be the right choice, but it's there. If you want more mines, hey, there's five more. Um, and, and moving right along, looking for the next multi-node, next multi-node, here we go. Uh, we got this one over here, giving us mortars, flamethrowers, boom cannons. Again, gonna be meta-dependent. Uh, if you want some splash, there's some flamethrowers or mortars. You want some, uh, you know, you want some single target, you got boom cannons. It really depends on the meta, but I like the options. Um, Coming down here, we've got a very interesting multi-node. Um, this is where you get your laser beam, your grappler, or your doom cannon. You got the you got everything covered right here. Laser beam, obviously, for your squishy troops, RZCM, like any anything that can that can just get zapped with low HP. Also, including our new friend the bombardier, um, laser beams can be pretty pretty lethal to them. Uh, grappler, as you know, very bad for single point stuff. Um, probably also tears up gra um, grenadiers as well. Same thing with Doom Cannon. These are all bad for Grenadiers, or for Bombardiers, I should say. Um, but it kind of depends on the meta and which one you want to run. And I have a feeling we might be switching a lot between these nodes um, in this tree, or on this particular multi-node. So that's a, that's a very spicy one. And um, well, we'll talk about pathing here in a second, the tech tree. Okay, we talked about this one, moving right along. Um, Got another multi-node up top, uh, more mines if you want, this time times 10, otherwise you can get a shock blaster two or a hot pot two. Again, meta dependent, I don't know what people will be doing at the time, but there's our options. We got shock blasters, we got hot pots, we got grapplers, we got lasers, and we got doom cannons, guys. We're getting all sorts of stuff. Um, 
Here we go, another multi-node. This time you can pick up another rocket if you want. Uh, in general, guys, rockets are kind of like uh, expensive, just like they were last season. So I would probably hold off on rocket upgrades, at least initially. I don't think there's a very good value there. Um, but it kind of depends which way you're going in the tech tree and everything else. Uh, point is, you'll probably be looking at between boom cannons and machine guns. And again, just depends on the meta. Um, and what you're up against. Okay, we've got another node down here giving us microwavers, floddies, and semos. I think in general, semo is going to be your go-to choice, kind of your jack of all trades, but you got options, so here you go. Um, I like the fact they give us different options. Um, now we got a mine node, so there's there's another mine node in here. Uh, speaking of mine nodes and multi-nodes, uh, we've already done some testing to verify the claim that uh, multi-node tech level increases have been fixed. It was a bug. Anytime you change multi-nodes in the past, tech level would increase. Verified, that has been fixed. And there was also a problem in the last season where um, certain prototypes weren't being removed when you would switch them in the, or certain items in the multi-nodes weren't being removed when you would switch them, um, namely mines. And we've verified that that also works as intended. So there's no mine bug, and the uh, the tech level for multi nodes is working as as it should, because um, that would have been that would have been pretty spicy if it wasn't um, for other reasons. <laughs> Unlocking the third engine room. So yeah, there's a mine node. Um, Again, meta dependent. I'd probably lean towards shock mines. I find they give you the best value just based on computation there. Um, coming down here, what do we got? We see another stinking laser beam. We got a damage amp, and we got a doom cannon. I mean, another spicy note. The only thing that's missing here is a grappler. So maybe they thought two grapplers was a bit too much last season. So in this season, we'll just have maybe the option of one grappler. It makes me think that that other previous node would probably be used for grapplers since we've got the other options over here. We've got the laser beam and the doom cannon. Although damage amp is always spicy, guys, so I don't know what you guys are going to pick. Up here, we got shock launcher, boom cannon, machine gun. Uh, pretty much a no-brainer. I believe the answer is shock launcher. I, can, I can't really see how it would be anything else on that multi-node. Um, and that's it. Okay, so that just gives us a flavor for what we're going to see in this uh, in the season. Again, we don't see any more sky shields, and uh, we don't see any shield gens, for that matter. Um, are there any other prototypes that we're missing? Um... Not that I can think of. Oh, yeah, Boom Surprise. We didn't see Boom Surprise, did we? You know what, that's okay. I mean, they're cool, but they weren't that great. So yeah, I don't think we, we ran across a Boom Surprise. We'll just assume and move forward. Now let's talk about the new style of this tech tree. They've done a couple of different things. Well, first of all, let's obviously talk about the length of the season. <laughs> Season's now three times longer, which means our tech levels have kind of been reduced accordingly. Um, now, I think our tech levels were actually just halved from previous season. Oh, no, 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 they're a third. I take it back. Yeah, every, everything's ratioed by about a third. So, um, you know, expect things to be more drawn out. I kind of like it for the most part. It lets us explore the metas for a longer period of time. At least those of us that play at the top, because early on we can usually cruise through a bunch of them very quickly. So, in a way, I'm enjoying playing at 2ER, and in a way, I'm not. I just want to move forward. But, um, so yeah, everything's kind of like different. This also means that the influence of... Um, tech coming from rank chests is not going to be as profound over the duration of the season or even at the start because um, rank chests have also been reduced by a third. So now anytime anyone's climbing the ranks and they're getting a rank chest, it's only a third as potent as it was before. So it doesn't give us as much of a tech advantage as, as we had in the previous season or the disadvantage. It all depends on your perspective, right? Um, so that's really, really good. It's in its own way. It's 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 helping to iron out some of the huge uh, power differences we saw earlier in season two. So that's cool, and that's just by the sheer nature of this being a full season and the way things are scaled. Um, that being said, though, early tech is still important, and you guys should do your best to get the most effective early tech possible. Um, but we'll get into those specific choices here in a second, at least briefly. What I want to just analyze here with this tree is it just it's a very, very interesting pattern that they've given us. Like, for instance, once we unlock this third engine room, which is difficult to do right now, but everyone's trying to do it, um, we get three paths to go from. We get one where we can choose Brick, but she's a dead end, but it's also our first hero. Or you can go down and get the flamethrower, the flare, and the warriors, uh, start a warrior meta, you know. Um, and of course you can go up. Now the thing is, the only way to actually progress over to the uh, fourth engine room is to go up. So eventually you gotta go up anyway, okay? So you know that. Now for the for the early starters, for the people that are really, really trying to push like myself, um, 
usually the best option is to just get as quickly as you can to the next engine room because every engine room tends to give you an advantage. You just have to make sure that you're going to be competitive in the meta that you're in while you're trying to progress to the next engine room. Having that next engine room is a huge, huge advantage that you bring with you to every fight. And it's not like you're penalized for going to the next engine room without being fully teched up because there's just nobody else up there <laughs> that has uh, the same kind of engine rooms as you, or at least not not many, so most people you'll get paired with will have less engine rooms. So at the start, the path we take is going to be a little bit different than at the medium point or even at the late point of the season, depending on when you get to this, this junction. So I really love the different paths and the different options, and I know the, the meta will change over time, and then the proper path to take will change over time. But I have a feeling we'll be we'll be going for the top. I'll probably take a pit stop for Brick, but I mean, how can you play without flares? So I'll probably have to go down to at least flares, but whatever. It's a really interesting choice. Now, obviously, guys, the 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 star of the season here, Gramps. I call him Gramps. The the uh, the Grenadier. No, the Bombardier. Bombardier. Um, you know, we're gonna have to pick him up. Let's 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 be honest. I mean, everyone's gonna be uh, picking this guy up. And I have a feeling that if played properly, he can be pretty, pretty overpowered. So I think he's going to be worth picking up. Um, so obviously it's another reason why you want to rush to this engine room right away. But they put him on a dead end, which is interesting. So I mean, you know, if you pick him up, then it slows down your progress. Going towards the next engine room, for instance, at the start. Uh, but we got to pick him up, right? Um, now, interestingly enough, we'll notice how the path comes down here for Kavan. You're like, well, maybe I don't want Kavan. Although Kavan is a very instrumental hero, a very important hero in the season two, and also season one, he was pretty darn strong there too. Uh, you might argue he was the MVP for heroes for season two, so you don't want to pass him up. Um, also, Kavan's gotten a little bit cheaper. His rank four and five upgrades have been reduced in cost. Um, so he's even cheaper than before, so why wouldn't you? The other reason why you'll probably want to come down here is because it's where you hit your first multi-node, um, where you can get your first prototype. And again, the choice will depend on meta, but like we saw earlier, this is the only location to get a grappler. So I have a feeling at some point, this node will become dedicated to grapplers. But you come down here, you're losing your progression to the next engine room. So maybe you don't want to go down there. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, you get all those interesting choices. Now, now coming up to this branch where you can... Uh, oops. Uh, where you can go up and get gunboat energy, and then you can get the rocket launcher and medics. To me... I don't see myself going after rockets like I told you before, and medics, psh, we don't need no stinking medics. I don't think I'll be picking up medics, so that makes it pretty easy for me. Maybe I'll duck up here and get GBE. Maybe not, though, because gunboat took a huge discount um, in this season. The, to max out your gunboat, I think things were reduced by like 60%. Some of the costs are 70%. It's way cheaper than before. So maxing out your gunboat uh, does provide great value. Especially when you're trying to get all that early tech, when you're trying to unlock um, the next engine room, looking to max the gunboat, probably a pretty smart way to do it um, in terms of the tech per upgrade token. Uh, it's, it's got a really good return on it. Um, anyway, so the point being is we might go up there to get the gunboat energy. We might not. I don't know. It depends what we're running and if we need more. Um, but ultimately, the choice is up to you. Now, once you get to this engine room over here, which is the, uh, gosh, where are we? Uh, that's the third engine room, fourth engine room, fifth engine room. Right, so once you get to the fifth engine room, now you've got some more interesting choices. Uh, you can either go down for the tanks, or you can go to the right for shock bombs. Um, ultimately, if you go down for tanks, you're kind of trapped. You can't really get out. Well, you can come back up to get shock bombs, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, you'll get stuck down here in the bottom. There's a lot of juicy stuff down there. Or you get the shock bomb, you go straight up, and then you go right to the next engine room. I can guarantee that's the path that probably everyone will be taking right at the start. Because like I said, getting the next engine room is really important. Later in the season, people will probably meander along through the bottom. But there's a lot of juicy stuff down here, guys. You've got your troop health. You've got your troop damage. You got your, freak, your stinking critters, or your freaking critters. Um, you got cryos, which is good, a good part of any cheese combination. Cryo heavy zooka. And then you got this juicy multi-node down here that has your semos, floddies, microwavers, whatever. Um, so there's a lot of reason to play down there. And there's Sparky. Sparky, by the way, went up in cost this season. Um, some are, I think her rank 4 and rank 5 upgrades cost more than before. So she's even more expensive. They're trying to discourage us from Sparky. Is that because she's a good value? I don't know. 
Um, but let's say you take the top, you open up the uh, what would be the sixth engine room, then you come directly to Bullet. Bullet's always a great choice. He might be the MVP hero this season. Just depends on what the meta combos are. And it really depends how the Bombardier works out. I have a feeling that running him with like with TGM and throwing him in there might be good, or just TG with the Bombardier might be really good. I feel like those multiple layers of protection are nice because the Bombardier will stand behind the Grenadiers, the Grenadiers will stand behind the tanks, and the tanks will roll behind Bullet, in theory. Um, but anyway, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, you come across the top, uh, then you get an option to go into another dead end where there's another multi-node to get the shock launcher. You can also get building health. It's the first ice, guys. You realize how long it takes to get ice? You gotta get deep into your sixth engine room to get ice. <laughs> and uh, so I think we'll be going there for sure. It's PvP after all. Seems a little bit late to be getting ice. Um, and that's a whole other topic about uh, why that is. But um, anyway, and then you dump down here and we finally get some more stats. We get some more juicy uh, multi-nodes and uh, there you go, some more troop damage, troop health. Uh, you can get some more building health. So yeah, there's building damage over here. Sorry, I passed it up. So you can get up to 100% building health and building damage. And it looks like we can also get up to 100% uh, troop health and troop damage. So that's gonna make for a very more interesting end season. It won't be nearly as chaotic as we had um, at the end of season two, where it was just a huge grind fest. So I actually, I kind of like that. And depending on the amount of structures and how things play out, we'll see. But I think we're in for a really fun and interesting season. It's gonna be a long one too. I don't know yet. I haven't done the calculations or I haven't seen the calculations. I don't know if we will be able to max the, the tech tree out or not, given the full duration of the uh, season. My guess is yes, but I don't know yet. I'll get back to you on that as soon as I have that information. Um, overall, what else there is to say, I've pretty much gone over some of the cost adjustments. In general, all the troops, their rank 5 upgrade has been reduced by 1 6th or 16.67%. So that's good. So things overall in the tech tree have more or less gotten cheaper with the exception of, like I said earlier, Sparky got a little bit more expensive. Uh, Brick, her final rank, her rank five upgrade was also reduced by 16%. So that means it's cheaper to get cluster grenade than before. Um, things got a little bit cheaper, which is good, which makes me think we might be able to max it out, but I didn't count all the nodes in here either. Um, it's a lot of talk about the tech tree, but the tech tree is very important, guys, um, because it's not just the tech, but it's how you use it, how you spend it. Now, it's all about effective tech. So getting into the early metas that we've all been discovering right now, um, we've basically got two main attack styles. We've got the heavies going, you can go all heavy with Heavy Rush, which has always worked well in the past, or you can go with the Riflemen. And Riflemen right now, guys, have been storming it. The people at the top of the global leaderboard have been running all rifles, pretty much. I'm sure there's always exceptions, so let me know about it. But I'm pretty much everybody's been running all rifles to get up there as of now. The reason why is there's not a lot of good early counters for them. There's just not a lot of splash and people haven't been putting much um, upgrades into it. Plus, a lot of people assumed it would be a heavy rush meta, just like I kind of did. So we also geared our defenses for heavies, which is why we picked cannons in these nodes. But um, anyway, the, <clears throat> the best thing to combat the the riflemen like i think i still think they're not going to be effective tech in the end like you saw the lasers we got two different nodes that give us lasers okay like once you see lasers riflemen they get scared especially zookas um so i see this being a much more armored season overall so i just i just don't think they're going to have a lot of value except early but hey early getting getting uh, shot up in rank and getting all those early juicy rank chests is quite nice as well um but i still am not putting my money there um, it's been very difficult to defend. One of the best defenses against them is mortars. Start upgrading your mortars to defend against riflemen, um, at least to rank three. And mines to a certain extent. The problem with mines is they don't really do much to stop heavy rushes because you'll be combating, you'll be fighting both. Um, I still believe in the max boom cannons or the max cannons though, just because they have a lot of health. And uh, just keep working on splash. Other than that, um, obviously. Uh, not only is it important to have effective tech, but effective base design as well. Um, I've been evolving this this design, and, and even with uh, OP Destroy, we've been working on it together a bit, um, and just tweaking little bits and pieces here and there. Um, this is we're both using a very similar design right now, and we have only slightly slight differences in our tech tree. 
Um, I think I'm higher, one higher rank on mortars, and he's one higher rank on mines. But it's pretty similar. And uh, we're getting pretty good results with this. Um, there is another little maybe bug in the game I should mention, or a feature. Um, this configuration of engine rooms, as you see it right here, has been known to cause issues when um, this one right here is being attacked. As soon as this one's dead, and let's let's say the machine gun's already gone, as soon as this engine room is dead, you would think they would go directly to this engine room, but it's still very possible that they can target onto a structure. Uh oh, they can target onto a structure that's over here. Um, there we go. And I've seen some really weird pathing. It's probably some kind of a glitch that involves the corner or the edge. But uh, as a result, I recommend that configuration. <laughs> the only downside to this is um, that they're a little bit close so you can get some splash from Barrage. And uh, yeah, uh, mines are very important. I think, well, I could be wrong. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of philosophy, but I like the mines because they're very effective at, at riflemen and there are a couple of different paths they'd like to take on these bases. A lot of times they'll do a delayed drop where they take six boats of rifles, they try to clear out your front, and they drop in two from the side. Well, those two from the side have a nice path of mines they have to walk through to get to my engine rooms. Or they just drop all their rifles, let junk clear out, and they kind of naturally meander along this path over here. So we've got mines to cover both paths, um, which means they probably got to spend some GBE on it, which is great because that means it's less GBE to spend in the engine room. Um, and again, for heavy defense, because you need to defend both guys, you need to defend heavy rush and Johnson rushes, or rifleman rushes, uh, having a bunch of your big damage up front, your big boom cannons up front, is very, very, I'm sorry, your big cannons up front, is very helpful. Um, because it will slow them down, and you might be able to pick off a few early on, which just slows down the rest of their entire push. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much detail to get into here, guys. Uh, there's another really dirty configuration I like. It's this double mortar right here, and to a lesser extent, this this offset mortar. Notice how everything else is up on the ramp. These three cannons. This mortar is offset one tile, because if they do attack me with riflemen, guys, I want to kill as many as I can right at the start, and I just want to make them think about where they want to spend their GBE. So, um, yeah. Oh gosh, it's a lot, huh? Um, but, you know, it, it's introductory to the season, so there's a lot to cover. Uh, the total season length was 88 days and some amount of hours, like 88 days and 16 hours or something like that. Um, so it's a very long season. And uh, just just strap yourselves in. And remember, guys, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Although the opening is definitely a sprint, uh, if you want to do well early on. Um, speaking of that, take a quick look at the global leaderboard. Um, I think we're top... 30 at least i was 25 earlier 26 yeah we're 26th on the planet right now that won't last but that's good and uh where's op destroy he's down here somewhere he's 39th yeah we were pushing together tonight earlier um anyway let's see well let's let's just let's talk about okay next phase of the video i'm going to show you some a couple of replays with some different styles of attacks that i'll do it's all pretty similar guys basically you need to just drop your troops you need to know like how to drop them where to drop them when to drop them and you need to just have barrage skills. Like, you need to understand that if you barrage directly on the center of your target, you'll probably get the maximum damage, but maybe you don't need the maximum damage, so you can start moving your barrage one or two tiles away from center towards the direction where you want more splash damage to go. And then you can get more value from your barrage like that, and ultimately save time, right? Because all these things are races. Um, typically what we do... Let's, do I have a typical attack in here? This, this one... This one, I think, was typical. Normally what we do is we just bard out the junk from the back. Like, we drop all of our troops in the front. I like to drop my troops more on the right. And um, they kind of work their way over towards the left. I also use a multi-fingered uh, drop. I use all three fingers and I just, like, tap it really quickly. That way I can get the troops out faster. Um, as you can see, we're just barraging out the targets in the back. And we're also going to be using... Yeah, you see how that barrage went in front of that cannon? We're doing that to get more splash on the other cannon right here, because if you can do that, you can get more value. Each of those cannons takes more than one barrage to take out, but if you can get the splash from one barrage to hit the other cannon, then it only takes one barrage per cannon, basically. Um, and anyway, you can see we just clear out the back so they can take their turn, and then we just go up and finish off the engine rooms. I think we might get another barrage right at the end. Yep. And then we blow it in there, and boom, just like that, we take him out. That's kind of a standard hit. Most of the hits go in that fashion. Um, there's another type of hit where I like to call it cutting off the snake. Like, you can kind of think of this long extension of the base sort of as a snake. 
And sometimes it's better just to cut it off in the middle and have your troops go directly to the engine rooms. And a perfect example was this attack down here. So you can see, I'm gonna cut the snake off right in the middle. And just watch how this is done, all right? So first we know that this the max level uh, cannon takes uh, two barrage, two level, rank three barrage to get out. So we start with that, because that's, that's the first part of the snake we gotta cut. We also dropped all of our troops kind of down here, like on the left side of the ramp, because we wanted them to go to the right. And now we're just cutting off the rest of the stuff with Barrage. Again, we're using the power of our overlap to kind of get more splash damage. Now look, look where the troops are ending up. They all converge to that mortar, and then almost all of them run straight up to the engine room. So that's, that's called like cutting the snake in half, or I don't know what you want to call it. But um, just look for those opportunities because you can save a lot of time, but you got to be careful because if you mess it up, you're probably going to lose. <laughs> Otherwise, you've just done the standard clear from the back. But cutting off the snake in the middle can save you time, so look for it. Um, I thought there was one other style of attack I wanted to show you. Um, oh, I think it was just, yeah, just this one. Sometimes they put a lot of value in the front, and there's a lot of front-loaded stuff. It's better to spend one or two barrage just to help soften up these targets. When you have a lot of stuff around, you can get some splash. This one didn't get the most splash, but sometimes it's worth it. Um, if you got a lot of value, take it. If they put a lot of uh, defenses together, barrage it, because ultimately it's going to save you time. So I can I have enough where I can drop one in the front to kind of help speed things up, and then we just start clearing from the back going forward. Standard stuff again. Um, anyway, let's just jump into one or two live hits real quick. Um, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how long. The queue time might be a little bit uh, long. Let's just jump into one live hit, and then we'll wrap up the video right there. I still got a lot of work to do on the thumbnail and everything else. Oh, and I want to tell you guys, I'm moving this weekend. I'm going to be really busy. Plus, we got Mega Crab, so um, you might not see some videos from me for a couple of days, or they might be really short. Um, but I'm just, I just got stuff going on right now in my life, but I'll get, I'll get settled in here and I'll be, I'll be cranking them out again at the same regular, I don't know, two, three, four day rate that I was, but you know me guys, I'm only putting out videos when there's stuff to talk about. Oh, I do have all the data from the end of last season, but, um, I'm not going to present it here, but it might come up in another presentation. Let's focus on this hit. Now, see all that value up front that we were talking about? We're definitely going to take advantage of that. What we need to note is how much health is on these sniper towers. You see, 5,100. Okay, I'm going to need to do a combination of two barrage to get rid of both of those. Um, one right in the middle could do it, but if I fail, then I won't get as much value on my second barrage. Um, yeah, we're going to do two on that, but I do want to do one in the middle. Uh, I know I'll have a total of four barrage, so what I want to do is get really good value on the opening barrage. So I'm going to put, be putting a barrage on this cannon right here, and on this cannon right here. That's going to help soften everything up as we go forward. Although we could possibly cut the snake off. I'm just afraid that we might get trapped if we do that. Um, let's, let's, do the, let's just stick with our first plan. Cutting the snake off might be a good plan on this one though, guys. This might be a mistake, but here we go. Multi finger drop. Let's get our barrages out. We're gonna go uh, here and here. Yeah, so we got all those cannons nice and softened up. They're still gonna chew up our heavies quite a bit. I'm gonna start working on our barrages back here. Um, I wanna go one right here like this. You better die. Okay. And then two right here like this. We'll get a little bit of splash under that machine gun. Every little bit counts, though. Every little bit helps. Now, it's still taking a little bit of time to get through this. I'm getting worried. I like to get to the turn by 3 minutes and 20 seconds, or 3.15 at the latest. We're taking the turn at 3.16, so not bad. We'll probably end up at 3.01, maybe maybe 3. This is a weird engine configuration. Let's, here we go. I will get one more for a barrage. Start spamming it. Barrage, 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 barrage. Get a couple of rockets in there. And, oh, 259. Yeah. It took 16 seconds after the turn to get it down. Um, boom, just like that. That's how we do it, guys. First win of the day. Excellent. That's what we like to see. Wow, getting close to rank 25, guys. That's really what I'm shooting for. Oh, man, one win away. Okay, 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 okay. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, oh, I got my light on behind me. Whoops, I just realized that now. Nor normally I turn that thing off, sorry. Um, okay, here we go, here we go. 
Come on, give me, give me a weak opponent. Give me a weak opponent. I want that juicy, juicy rank chest. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby. You can do it. Come on. Don't make me edit this. <laughs> I hate long queue times. Come on. I mean, it's not that I hate long queue times. I just for, for a video that I'm trying to produce, it's not good, right? Because it makes me have to edit. Here we go. Here we go. Lin Lin, uh, 24. Okay. Um, this looks pretty easy. The fences look under level. The mortars are high. They're, they're rank 17. They're level 17. That's rank 4. But everything else is pretty low. That's a rank 4 cannon. I think that's like a rank 1 sniper tower. Anyway, we're going to just uh, do our standard from the back to the front. One, two. Um, yeah, we're going to take out both sniper towers and this cannon. And I think we'll be good to go. Uh, that's going to take... If I do it right, it'll just take one, two, three barrage. If I do it right. So, we can do a value barrage up front. What's got the most health? The cannon, huh? Um, let's not do the value barrage. Let's just drop everybody and go. All right, here we go. Three finger drop. Now let's work on getting our value. Cause yeah, those are spaced pretty far apart. That's the thing. I don't know if I can get all the value I wanted to get on these. Okay, first one's down. Wow, he took me down fast. Well, that's a rifleman rush. I don't think we defended it very well, but I know I know I took all my time. Okay, can we get this guy down? If we can, I should have gone for the value barrage, but that's okay. Uh, this is the one I wasn't sure about. Okay, we got it. But now the question is, do I get one or two? Uh, 53, yeah, let's just part this guy down here. I mean, I'm putting the damage on this first one so I can get the damage, get the next barrage, and throw it on the second one sooner. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's take Lin, Lin down to Pound Town and let's take Shishkin to rank 25. Come on. Come on. I know they want rifles on me. Boom! That's how we do it, son. Yeah. Rank 25 feels so good. Feels so good. Mm mm mm. Yeah, baby. There we go. All right. Well, that is a great way to end the video right there. So let's just let's just call it a wrap. Um, please let me know in the comments below how you like the season. Also, of course, I should have even I forgot to mention with the uh, with all the non and training players, you got the 50% reduced uh, training time, which is fantastic. Let me know how that's working out for you. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And whatever else you want to tell me, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subbed to my videos, uh, to my channel yet, please do. I'm just trying to get more subs every day. And if you've made it this far, I know you like the content. Remember, guys, as always, uh, be kind to others. Because if you're not, you're just being mean and mean people suck. Have a great day.